It's a beautiful day outside. It's the kind of day that makes you feel that anything is possible. It's the kind of day that makes you love nature. Well, while we're loving nature here in November on a warm day in Montreal, this is what's happening uh, up in the North Pole. Imagine an entire ice shelf the size of the lower half of Manhattan dropping off of uh, the polarized cap. So I'm not talking about you know, little pieces of ice. I'm talking about entire ice shelves the size of lower Manhattan dropping off into the ocean. That's what's happening right now. I know that that seems morose, but I'm here to tell you that climate change is a major problem in the world today, one that the youth has to be very concerned about, but one which we can overcome. Reality check, where are we right now? We are locked into 1.5 degrees of global temperature increase. Now, we are headed to three degrees by 2050. I have a friend, a really smart guy, who did a lot of years of university, who said, three degrees? What's the big deal? It's the difference between wearing a sweater or not wearing a sweater. Well, let me tell you what three degrees would do. At three degrees, Italy, Greece, Spain, and so many other dry countries would become deserts. At three degrees, New York City and other coastal cities like it and so many islands would be underwater. In fact, we saw the you know, major once in a hundred year storm last year um, begin the process of enveloping lower Manhattan with water. It doesn't happen overnight, but we're starting to see this happening in the world today. At three degrees, crop yields would be down 30 to 40 percent. Now, you guys know that the global population is increasing. So while the world is filling up with more people, hungry people, we're going to see crop yields drop by 30 or 40 percent. We cannot have that happen. Let's understand if climate change is a problem, if global warming is a problem, where it's coming from. And then we can attack the problem. It's coming from carbon emissions. And let's understand where carbon emissions come from. Well, they're primarily coming from the energy industry and the transport industry. If we don't attack those industries, if we don't reinvent the way we power the world, we don't have a chance of tackling climate change. So we need to move from a world of this to a world of this. We need to go from a world of dirty energy to a world of clean energy. I want to propose to you guys a simple formula. Now, I know that you guys are in school and probably don't all love your math classes, but this is one of those formulas that you'll like. It's a simple one. Global impact can only happen, major big things that happen in the world can only happen when a lot of people make a lot of money. If we can't figure out a way for a lot of people to make a lot of money, we're not going to change the world. Now, historically, a lot of people made a lot of money in different industries when we thought creatively, when we thought out of the box. When we did a bunch of things that were already out there, just sort of copying other things, we never tended to make huge global impact. So let's take an example of where that happened. Not so long ago, phones looked like this. I don't know if you guys remember that to call your mother involved taking out a rotary phone and moving your finger in some awkward fashion and calling your mom and having a verbal conversation. And the company that would sell you that service was a phone company that was the only one in its market to operate. So in Canada, it was Bell or Bell. If you were in London, it was BT or BT. And almost overnight, really in the matter of a few years, we went from this to this. Ah, this is something that you guys recognize. This is a world of converged communications where we have fixed line phones and wireless phones and we have Wi-Fi connectivity and we could use Skype and we have social networks. So how many ways could we talk to our mom? Today, so many ways. You could pick up a phone, your mobile phone, and talk to her, or you could slap a picture up on Instagram, let her see it, and call that a conversation. Depends on your relationship with your mother. But think about how communications have evolved. Because at the end of the day, back to the formula, we thought out of the box. We invented all these cool new technologies, and all these new operators came in to sell us the service of communications 
And with that kind of growth, a lot of investors smelled the opportunity to make money. And they invested in tech startups, and the solutions got even cooler. And before you knew it, we had the kind of global growth that really we can call major global impact. So let's try to transition that way of thinking to the world of energy. Well, in the world of energy today, this is how we power the world. Another kind of dire way to put it is this. I don't know if you guys like pie charts, but this pie chart is annoying. 96% of our energy in the world today comes from dirty sources, carbon emitting sources. And only 4% come from clean sources. That's a reality check, guys, because the hype would suggest otherwise. The TV commercials, the advertisements in airports would have you believe that today the world is blanketed in solar panels and wind turbines and so many other sources of clean electricity. But in reality, we're stuck at 4%. And that is not going to lead to the global impact we need in order to solve climate change. So clearly, we are not being terribly creative. Clearly. We're not making a lot of people a lot of money, and clearly, we're not yet having global impact on climate change. This is a vision of the future, okay? This is the type of home that we believe uh, is possible today, and so many other technologies, even over and above what we're showing here, are available today to reduce the cost of clean energy dramatically, to make it as cheap as the dirty energy. And so the problem in the world today isn't that we haven't invented the technologies, the products, uh, to get energy from clean sources. The problem is that we're not implementing them. We're not deploying them in large projects. Because the people that fund, that give the money to those large projects, are afraid of technology risk. We need to break that cycle. We need to push and find new ways of implementing these solutions that would reduce the cost of clean energy today. And that's what's going to have a global impact. So this is a house of the future. Solar panels on the roof, an electric vehicle parked in the driveway. Um, you have a smart thermostat, which is allowing you to plug into a smart grid and use your energy efficiently. The house, by the way, may have geothermal holes underneath of it. And the house is producing clean, non-carbon emitting electricity more than it's using. Imagine flipping the equation and selling back electricity to your, uh, to your grid, selling back to your utility company. That would be amazing. Um, now, if one home and another home and another home began to pursue this type of technology, we would end up having entire villages and entire cities uh, you know, that would be green. And we're starting to see them pop up in different parts of the world. And if we were able to see the world in this way, we would change the way we perceive clean energy. So for example, when we look at the map of the world, what do we notice? In North Africa, it's pretty much sunny almost all year round. There's enough solar energy in North Africa to power all of Europe. And the Europeans are moving off of nuclear. And so there's a perfect opportunity to sell North African sun to the very densely populated Europeans. How do we get it there? Digging under the Mediterranean Sea and putting cables is too expensive. So we thought out of the box, creative, and found a company that takes the mineral called bauxite, which is what goes into aluminum cans, and heats it up next to a solar plant near a port. And basically, it becomes a gigantic battery that we can float on a barge to southern Europe and drain it of its energy. And because it's rechargeable, we could float it back to North Africa and do it again and again. And that's how we could take sun from North Africa and power the Europeans. Water is also super cool. It's clean, it's renewable. And we don't just have to do what we did in the 60s, putting big dams on you know, massive rivers. You have ocean currents that are very reliable all around the world. We can put turbines that turn and power generators and get a lot of electricity that way. And even more interesting, when you really start getting creative, I bet you guys never thought about this. We found a company that thought about, what about all the times we turn on the water, hot water, cold water, we flush the toilet. In our cities, we are surrounded by municipal piping. And that's moving water all the time. Well, imagine taking, dr drilling into those pipes, putting in a turbine, powering a generator, and you know, selling clean electricity that way. So it really blows the mind. 
At the end of the day, if we pursue these strategies, little by little, we're going to see the world that we live in today, filled with dirty energy, become the world of tomorrow, a world filled with clean energy, a green world. At the end of the day, what I want you guys to think about is this. You're the youth. You have to think about the planet that you want to live in for your children and your children's children. The planet is alive and we have to take care of her. And we have to be as creative as possible to find solutions today that exist to get the world powered by clean energy. And that will be the only way we have global impact on climate change. Thank you very much, and I hope you guys enjoy the conference. Thank you.